Mr. <clears throat> Minister, Excellencies, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I want to thank the uh, Government of Netherlands, the United Nations Office for Disarmament Affairs, uh, High Representative Kane, and Harvard University and the James Martin Center for organizing this event. It's my privilege to have this opportunity to recognize the important role of scholars in addressing an issue that has plagued the international community for far too long. Growing up in the Cold War, I was routinely reminded of the threat of nuclear weapons, either when I was hiding under my wooden desk, uh, looking out for the bright light that might fall, fallout shelters, duck for cover drills was part of our, our daily lives living here in New York. Uh, of course, the world's nuclear arsenal has been reduced by over half since the Cold War peak, and the start and the new start are signals that cooperation on reducing nuclear stockpiles is possible. But the threat posed by nuclear weapons is no less important today than it was during my childhood. And we may have fewer nuclear weapons, but these weapons and their delivery systems are more powerful and more sophisticated than ever before. One of the great ironies of this is that the cost of developing and maintaining nuclear weapons is surpassed only by human environmental costs of using them. And although it may be expensive to destroy them, the price we would pay if they fell into wrong hands or detonated accidentally would be far greater. With tensions surfacing and resurfacing around the world, nuclear weapons have once again become a political tool. This technology that affects us and our environment so profoundly is wielded as an instrument of power. And that is why the work of academics and scholars is so crucial. You are not bound by the same political restraints as the delegates at this year's NPT Review Conference. Your research allows us to consider many possibilities for moving beyond entrenched military doctrines or seemingly fixed political positions. Your scholarship inspires debate. Your teaching fosters understanding. And with understanding, we can challenge the fears that allow nuclear weapons to be used to intimidate, coerce, and control. And so in a very real sense, your work can and will bring us closer to a world free of nuclear weapons. So I hope that the discussions today are fruitful, and I have no doubt that the impact of what happens here today will be felt far beyond these walls of this room and well into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wanted to thank very much uh, Mr. Douglas for uh, his great contribution as a messenger of uh, peace. And I think it's a great inspiration for all of us uh, to talk out of the box and to make this world that he's uh, looking for and we're all looking for come a lot closer. So it's a, it's a big task for all of you. I just wanted to give you a book. Now, I'm not sure you're going to read that tonight immediately. <laughs> it's called The Disarmament and Related Treaties. It's uh, made together by Angela Kane and the Dutch government. Uh, but it's uh, handy to have on your bookshelf. You. But it's also as a matter and a case of appreciation for all the work you're doing for this. Thank you very much. Thank we are inspired much. by you. And thank you very much. Thank you. Very you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks a lot.